So, um, hello everyone. Um, my name is Wu. Um, uh, I'm from Apple College. Um, as in Sydney, if you see someone else with koala, they are from Sydney too. I like this one. So, <laughs> so I'm from Melbourne. Yeah, here we go. So, um, today's topic um, how do we make uh, web as secure as blockchain? So, before I go into the solution, uh, let's remind a little bit how we end up, end up here uh, having an insecure web, uh, web, and connect, web and blockchain connectivity. So, web, web very pretty much started as some as we have an Ethereum blockchain, if you have a smart contract, you need to use interface for that, so what do we need technology for that? So, uh, we scan that JavaScript on top of the deck, so we choose it. And then, okay, but where do we put them? So, website, website. Can have JavaScript on website, so let's put them on the website. Then, how, if we put it on the website, how do we control what data can access? The Please, Mike. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. If we put it on the web, how do we give it access the data, the data, the user's data? Well, let's ask you every time. And then, continue from there, we have um, confusing transactions. A bunch of data, the user don't know they're signing. So what do we do? We write ERCs. If you follow the ERC transaction, it's kind of comprehensible. And then we have a lot of variation of those smart contracts. What do we do? We write more ERCs. Then we have uh, tokens that are more complicated than traditional ERC. We have CryptoKitty. They actually have color, the visual, the eyes, the eye style, the eye slash, and all things. What do we do? We hard code them into the browser. So this is how we ended up here. So uh, this is what I call um, um, this process of hitting a problem and solving it immediately with the most ready solution. I call it um, calling the design space. So here, it's, it's like this. You just go from somewhere, and if you hit the wall, find the nearest exit, and then go from somewhere else. Now, it, it, there is a better way to solve the problem. Uh, it, there is a better way, which is to find out what problem you are trying to solve. So the problem, what do people, people want from it? Uh, I have uh, uh, made uh, these four points. Summarizing very briefly, there are other points, but today I'm going to talk about this tool. First, people want to, because Web3 is a decentralized blockchain connected um, web, people want to see the truth. People want to see which bit of information on the web is true and uh, like how true it is. They have they need to trust the web. The other thing is um, interoperability. It's quite important because traditionally a web, uh, a web system is a giant. And then we have decentralized components, but users' expectation is still that if I want to serve the level of service that can be provided by Facebook, so how do we let these decentralized components work together? And then we have the privacy, that viewers, users are always expecting, expecting that Web3 is a more private web, something that the user is able to get what they want, the services they need, without giving away data birth or any private data. And then finally you have security which means the user knows what they are doing. They, have, they, are, they don't need a custodian of their asset because they know what they are doing with their asset. If they sign a transaction, they are signing a transaction. If they are signing a transaction to get Kitty, they are not accidentally giving away Kitty. Kitty. Now, given this, this is a problem that Web3 is going to solve, um, I will start with a very simple example to analyze how well this uh, problem is solved. This is um, a, a whole world example. I, I, I imagined it. This is called um, Kitty in the Garden. What it does is it, it draws uh, a crypto kitty. If you have a crypto kitty, it's in front, and then it gives you a garden background. That's all. That's all. Think about it as a uh, tokenized version of Hello World. You need to see the token somewhere in some, in some place. Now, traditionally, if uh, Vitalik and the Ethereum early evangelists envision this is how it works, user requests data. And the web server gives a bunch of JavaScript and HTML. And these JavaScript and HTML directs the user's browser to access a third node, get information from the token, like uh, accessing smart contract functions, getting the color of the kitty, getting the star hat, and draw the user interface. Now, let's look at um, trust, interoperability, privacy, and security. So, speaking of trust, how does the user know that the crypto kitty is actually rendered using the data? of his own kitty, or whether or not the, uh, the web server is giving them JavaScript to inquire kitty information and not the balance of the die contract. How do we know that? And then the interoperability. 
So if, in this case, you can see this is new kitty, the old kitty are just sitting there. The new one sometimes have flies flying around them, uh, doing funny things. So suppose crypto kitty adding new functions like this, new kitties, or like they, they made a function that makes kitty feel sleepy if you don't feed them. Then how do you know this moving part of decentralized components, how do you know if the website has updated their code to use these functions? That's interoperability. And then we have privacy. So apparently, in the chart, the website gets the data from the blockchain and render it on the web. But what if there is an arrow, another arrow coming from this um, website which feeds back data to the website? So the, the, the user doesn't know how much the web surf, web surf website can learn from your token. And then we have the uh, final the security the issue, which is if you want to sign a transaction, the such transaction is assembled by the code you don't know who wrote or whether or not you should trust. So, in fact, the trust is so broken that this model is more popular. This model, the user requests data from the web server, the web server is user with HTML, JavaScript, which requests the user's secure address. The user, the user then gives the theme address to the server, and the server can go look at the kitten data themselves. There's no need for the user to have, have access to Ethereum blockchain. If the user doesn't have access to Ethereum blockchain, how does the user know any information is true? In fact, you can produce this thing with just a picture, a screenshot of a kitty sitting on the, um, uh, in front of the garden, and the user will have no way to know if this is his kitty or not. So um, the solution would be, in this very simple example, is to build an enclave. An enclave is an area, a secure area, in the token space that is used on the web, but independent from the web. <coughs> so visually, an enclave probably looks like this. So normally it just looks like a kitty in front of the gardens. And I'll try to hold it on the hand. <laughs> so uh, if the user moves the mouse over this enclave, which shows that there's one enclave on the web, then this kitty gets highlighted. So the user knows this public domain is an enclave. It's, it's sourced from blockchain truth. So with this enclave construct, the protocol would look like this. The website would request you to have a kitty. This time the, web does not, the website does not provide direct instructions of how to get this information. It's embed, embedded in code, whereas in the security enclave. And the security enclave runs clean, signed code provided by uh, CryptoKitty or trusted sources that gives you information. Yes, we have a kitty. Privacy is protected here because you just have asked for one kitty. So I probably ask you the truth which kitty, but you don't need to know. What that doesn't need to know. Now you have a kitty. And what is the color? The website may ask. Because I need to draw the background. And the, the kitty, uh, the, the clean signed code running in the security enclave provide information, provide inter inter interface to access this information. You get a gray color and you can draw, draw a background now. Then, then you can render a kitty. And this, this is how it's going to be done with a security enclave. So let's re look at this uh, parameters again. Trust. So the user runs clean code signed in a security enclave, which access the zero node directly. It doesn't take input from the website, for example. So the user knows in security enclave, they can ascribe truth there. So that you get trust. And then you get into opportunity. If the, the crypto kitty focus wants to give a sleepy kitty look, in, in midday, then they can update their, uh, their code to run in security enclave. The website will be needed because website only care about joining the guard. That is the website whole, whole, whole thing about the website. It's called keeping the guard. And then you get privacy. Um, as I demonstrated, like you ask for a kitty, I don't even give you the name of the kitty or the ID of the kitty. I tell you, okay, I have a kitty. Security enclave has this inter interface to protect user privacy. And then you get security as well. If the, any transaction has to be signed, it is started from the web asking certain things to be done, and that action is performed in downplay, transactions assembly in downplay, following the rule that was previously written. So this will uh, uh, separate um, uh, the downplay from any security problem on the web. Now, if you run this technology, um, you need um, a way to deliver clean, signed code to the security downplay. And that's the technology um, we have been working on, it's called token script. You can 
as a executable package in Fermat. What it does is it has token information, like the name, uh, translations, it names, what you are saying that it conform, and then you get attributes like how to get colors, eye color out of Kitty, and then uh, you get transactions, like what transactions are possible with Kitty. Maybe the Kitty can mate, but the Kitty can, can sell them. Out. You can, I don't know. And security zoning, like uh, what kind of information is acceptable <coughs> from the security enclave, from which website? Whether or not uh, attestations user have on their mobile phone can be forwarded to the website. Security zoning. And then we have um, components. So we have cards. Cards uh, are the visual renderable part. So we can have a kitty card, which just shows the kitty. And then we have um, actions. Actions is, um, uh, uh, are the things that the transactions the users can compile for this uh, token. And understandably, this, this uh, actions might not entirely provided by Kitty. For example, if somebody, someone has an idea that's collateralized Kitty and provide a collateralization contract that collateralized Kitty, then you, as a collateralizing contract author, can provide an action that is uh, applicable to Kitty's. So that's the action view. And finally, you have the signatures. The reason I put multiple signatures here is because there might need to there might be multiple sources of trust. So just as I ex explained, the kitty is drawn with code signed by crypto kitty, but the collateralization of the kitty as an action that can be done on kitty might be signed by someone else. So this would be basically the file structure of token script. So um, given we have a, a, a brief understanding of how token script will solve the hello world problem, uh, I'd like to move forward to show you a real world problem and how token script will be applied. That's going to be more complicated, but still based on the same thing. So, uh, imagine with me that uh, you have a token that represents your car ownership. You, you, you get the token when you buy the car. And imagine that you have an insured car, which is another token you get when you pay the insurance together with the car token. And here, on this interface, there are multiple tokens. And um, the highlighted one the font is messed up, but it reads issue of and the original regular plate number. This is the card code. It's highlighted, it's security on play. Now, let's imagine with this new insurance token, what you can do with it. Um, imagine a business called Car Next Door. There actually is such a business place in Melbourne um, that allows you to uh, let your car be rented by uh, strangers. And uh, you just get a hundred dollar a day revenue coming to your pocket automatically. And a car is money, money for, itself, uh, for, for you. That's, that's the idea. And in order to use this service, you need to have a fully insured car. So the insurance token would be the enabler of this new uh, share economy startup. And when you use the insurance token for this new share economy, you get a rental car listing token. Which, which is the source of revenue that comes to you from time to time and represents that actually you have a source of revenue. If you want to, do, to securitize it, it's another story, but we, we, we just imagine that this is possible to have a startup called Car Next Door and we do this business. So the process will look like this. First, this is serious business. Website will say, do you actually own insurance? Now the website wants to learn something and the, the enclave has the policy that, okay, actually I can give a witness information. This, this is my policy. Uh, test station. And the website goes to the back of the website and asks the Ethereum node, is this policy correct? Does it cover all uh, unknown drivers, which is condition? And the smart contract says yes, and yes. This is run of communication where the user behind the security enclave and uh, the website using their their own node establish trust between each other. So you know, you know, previously in the car kitchen in the garden, the website doesn't even need to access the the, the theorem blockchain. If you lied about your having token, the kitten, the problem, but this is more serious. And to this point, we have established trust, and the website will send information, okay, send, send a transaction to get your car listed. And here, take this token script. This token script is a new one. This token script is issued by Car Next Door, the share economy company, and it contains the rules how to get a transaction, how to assemble a transaction to get your rental car listing token. So uh, what we have now is in the security enclave, uh, the environment security enclave will check, token, token <coughs> insurer signature is good, 
is issued from timelapse.com. And um, uh, then it will require you to know that actually is the token issuer from contractual level endorsed this token script. And the Ethereum node will come back and say, this token script is generated and not revoked. That's all good. And the user will get this, which is a transaction the user is going to assemble. It says that what token you're going to use by the transaction, now, what token you're going to use in the transaction, car insurance token, is dependency, and um, uh, what kind of token you're getting, which is car rental, rental car listing token. And it's green gray color because it doesn't exist yet. It's created on the moment of trans successful transaction. So um, this is what generated from the security enclave, and not by the website. Website simply say that you need to do such a transaction, and once you are done, tell me. And hello world, here we have a new token here. In the security enclave, we have an insurance token from Virgin Money, then we have the car next door token, rental car token. This is how it works. So, uh, yeah. When you say security on place, that's on the physical device or is that software? Actually, it's a software concept. Okay, so where is that software running? It's in the user's browser. So that's, that's, the, that's why it's relevant because uh, when we build Alpha Wallet, we build Wallet, we are able to modify our wallet to have this thing. But normally you would need a new kind of browser. Maybe that doesn't exist. Yeah, so this is a work in progress. Okay. <laughs> So, all right, so you create a browser that competes with Brave. It's a new browser. It's got a security enclave running in software. How do you trust the hardware? Uh, so, uh, this is a different level of topic. It would be great if the security enclave actually runs in the real security hardware security enclave, but I, I, this is um, something we can progress into. Okay, fair enough. So, actually, this is how Token Script would solve security on the, on the web, decentralized web 3. So, um, we have ample time for question. And yeah, you can ask questions. So any open one? Yeah, please. So you have a question. How do you know this security enclave has not been tampered? Uh, the user, how does the user know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's the so same the same function as trusting the DAP's source code to be loaded, right? Mm -hmm. So there are quite a, a few assumptions being applied here. So, for example, um, most computers, uh, computer model was uh, built based on the idea that you don't have physically own the device and you actually personally install it. What if you have the wrong version of Windows that actually you need your data to all the So the assumption is the user has the capacity to secure their device. But even with the assumption that like, like this as a relaxed assumption, the old security model will still not help. So we need new security model like token script. Are still with the same assumption. The, the user's device is secure. Yeah, please. Is, is, is token script open source? Okay, this is um, uh, it's on tokenscript.org, it's on GitHub, it's uh, Apache license, and there's uh, a technology that is being standardized uh, uh, by the uh, Ethereum Foundation, and we're in the process of um, sub uh, sorry, submitting it into standard track for Oasis. Yeah. Yeah. Oasis is the organization which previously produced open document format in order to open office. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving thing. I hope I get, it gets standardized really soon. Yeah. I just have a question. What's the current status? Or like, can we already start using it? Or I... Yeah, so there are tutorials on tokenscript.org. However, so tokenscript works in, uh, with a concept called context. So let's say the token would look differently if it's in your wallet or if it's on the web. Or if the token, let's say current token, would look differently if you are the borrower or if you are the lender. Different contexts will result the token being rendered differently, apply different logic. So currently, it already works on Alpha Wallet, the company, and the Alpha Wallet is open source wallet as well. But it only works with one context, which is called a uh, wallet context. So to make it really un work on the security enclave in the browser, this is something that will be promoted in progress. It's a context-based uh, concept concept on this script. Okay, so we have one minute left. Quick question, and, and we are done. So okay. if, if, assume that the public or private key pair is anywhere specific, does it have to be like a JSON blob, or can it be a hardware wallet, or like how does it interact with the keys, or is it just MetaMask for now? Okay, so you, if you want to kind of find another layer behind token script, let's say every time the transaction is going to be signed, the signing doesn't happen in, this, in the enclave, but in the, in the uh, sort of air gap, sort of the air device, that's something on a different layer, different layer of protocol. Yeah. Uh, token script doesn't take care of this layer. It, could it doesn't be. care about that. It doesn't, it doesn't care. care about this layer. Okay. So yeah, thank you very much.